Hello, and welcome back to the Sunday special episode of the UUP Podcast. I'm Jordana Abraham. And I am Jared Freed. It is so good to be back here with you, Jordana, but it is especially good because we have a very special guest today. Yes. Um, she is a feng shui consultant. Jeanette Sizakowski, thank you for coming on. Thank you, thank you. Welcome. We're you know we're so excited to have you on. What Jared? Do you want to tell us how like this came to be? Well, we've we you know on YouTube. If you haven't watched it already, we do the apartment tour. We and and we've had you know we go through these you know arcs on this show. Yeah. A subject comes up, and we get into it. We get into it, and and people reach out. So we did the tour of the apartment. We talked about how the apartment relates to relationships and relates to, you know, being a better self for the dating world, for your relationship world. And suddenly I get, so that goes out. (laughs) And I get this DM from Jeanette that she's like, I do feng shui. And I haven't heard of feng shui since like the 90s. Like I, 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 I honestly, it was like a thing for a moment. Was right. it? Oh. Well, I mean, I think I, 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 I've heard of feng shui in and out since the 90s, but I feel like there is something about, um, I've definitely heard about like, like I, th- I think there's also a, like a Swedish word, is it hig? Hid? Mm, uh, something like that? Yeah. Something about like, like a- uh, Bring up her competitor? <laughs> Yeah, like a, like another, another movement also yeah. that's about um I think it's Hig H Y G G E. Let's look it up. Yeah, it's Let's about like arranging uh, and cleaning. And, yeah. yeah, and I, you know, and I've also seen the um. I mean, yes, right. Yeah. Yes, there's a book about it. Yes, and I've seen <laughs> like the and I've read um the life changing magic of tidying up. So I think there's there's been a lot over the years about like what is the best way to organizationally like put all your like. Assemble all your shit to give you like the maximum feeling at home. Yeah. And Jeanette, you reached out because you saw my apartment. Is that why? It was, no, it was before. <laughs> this it was before. before. Oh, because so we were talking I'm about it. I'm a subscriber. Oh. Yeah. Oh, thank and you. lately you've been like trickling just things about your life in the apartment. And we knew, we did know the tour was coming out, or I knew the tour was coming up. But then you, a uh, subscriber episode was. I think my apartment's holding me back. Right. And you guys were dropping phrases like, Make your space intentional, and mm-hmm. uh, you you jokingly dropped like yeah feng shui, or even when Kelly was on the Mystic doing tarot, um, and you were like, well, if crystals have energy, yeah, like feng shui's energy, you know, like right. so it's you guys have been like dancing around it, and uh, what is what was it fuck around February? I just shot my shot, amazing, and, and, and here you are, and here all you the way are. from Cleveland. You came from Cleveland, yeah. I, I we thank you for that. Yeah. I, That's I also funny. So your guys's podcast is typically just on on repeat because I like that it's just so funny. The brain off the shelf thing really resonates with me because usually with feng shui everyone dumps all their stuff on me, and so I'm like I just want to listen to something funny. Um, one of the most re- or not recent ones, old old episode was a red flag deal breaker about Ohio and like. She was like, my friend won't date anybody from Ohio. <laughs> like, fuck Ohio. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there listening. I'm like, okay, that's going to come up. That'll be funny. But, you know, Ohio's not I, as bad as you think. Well, you're, I, listen, I would date someone who is from Ohio. <laughs> yeah, why Thank not? Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I love I'm Cleveland. Available. I'm a big Cleveland fan. <laughs> I, I like Ohio City. And we did yeah. a show. We did a live show in Cleveland. We did a live show. Yeah. We love hilarity. I wasn't Great there club. yet. So I was in Dallas for the last, like, nine years. And what okay. brought you to Cleveland? Uh, my grandma passed away. House okay. is available it's kind of like a family helping out so i'm like feng shui and updating it before we like sell it got okay. it and your so, company is called elemental, elemental clarity. clarity we want to make right. sure we go to plug city for a second yeah. yes. elemental clarity and jordana you go ahead so explain like what i guess like what you do when you saw this the subscriber episode like what made you feel like you should reach out well yeah so feng shui is the study of how your environment affects you It's this idea that if everything is energy, then all of your stuff in your space holds an energy. And I, I, my way of saying feng shui is giving your space attention with intention. Mm. So when I meet with a client, I, we always start out with what's your intention for your ideal life? Like what's next? What's the step? So 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 it's not the same. It's not like one size fits all. No. And that's another reason I love you guys because it's a, I do it from a nuanced perspective. You know, you guys right. are like, we're not going to go viral for our dating advice because we don't say the whatever, like the jarring stuff. We're, or the, we're not going to just give a, uh, a catchphrase. Yeah. So and that's speak. like 
there's a lot of viral feng shui people out there now, believe it or not, if your algorithm sends you that direction. Right, <laughs> which I'm sure yours does. And, well, if yes, mine does, yeah. 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 And I'm like, oh, that's just like, I don't do one size fits all feng shui. I do what is your intention? What's like, it's nuanced to your space, to you as a person. What got you into it? What what? The short version is uh, I have a master's in landscape architecture. There's different. You need a landscape architect. Jordana Sorry. has a a <laughs> full. Well, I quit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that didn't work out. For, okay, never didn't really work out. Okay. okay. Uh, but during it's not me. Okay. <laughs> during um. When I was getting that degree, so there's different types of feng shui. There's like Western feng shui. I practice Eastern feng shui, the really old one. It's like yoga. You know, there's like core power yoga, and then there's right. like really mystic yoga. Mm. But during that, there's the original feng shui is studying landforms. So as I'm writing papers and studying about landscape architecture, I'm learning about how there's this thing called feng shui, and you study the mountains, the wind, the water. And then I'm like Googling about it and find there's this Western feng shui where you can Google and like get love, like more have more love luck and more career luck and i was like yeah i want to make a lot of money and have a lot of boyfriends like this is sweet right so i would do for a while i did the like tchotchke one size fits all like place this here and your love will transform like okay and i don't know if i really I got a tarot card reading from Modern Mystic. It wasn't Kelly, but it was her shop. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there's just like these things that then she was on here. And I'm like, I should reach out to her while I'm in New York. And so. And you guys got together here. Yeah. We're going to feng shui her house. You're going to feng shui the house. Yeah. Okay. So. She's so on board. <laughs> how do you find. So you find a client. Someone says, I got a feng shui. Yeah. I got a feng shui. Uh, <laughs> I got a feng shui. I'm jonesing for a feng shui. <laughs> right. uh, you know, there are some people like that, and then there's some people that are just like, I just moved in this house, and everything in my life went to shit. Like, right. I mm. don't feel good. Or like, how many men I... come to you? Um, less. It actually started off with more men. Okay. Yeah. What, what about what? What man? <laughs> what man would do this? I, I don't know. I just, um, very, it feels very like the idea of like this home is crashing around me. Yeah. Like, it feels very much my mom, yeah. not my dad. So there's like, again, there's like, there's so many layers to feng shui and I'm actually really curious to see which way it goes, but there's like the decor route of like, I'm decorating it to make it look nice. And then there's like, I'm using the energy in my space to manifest more. And I think the type of feng shui I do is more the like, personal development, let's start accomplishing a bunch of things. So I find a lot of men that like are very career driven, but also mm. want like to feel balanced and like good. So and like not a home, like, would you get like a, for men, would it be more of a home office? We do the whole house. Do the whole house. Right. Yeah. Okay. I have a, I have a thing called the home energy refresh, which is just like, we talk for an hour. It's kind of what I was like, if they don't know what to talk about today, we'll do a home energy refresh for Jared's apartment based on his video. Well, um, that's something we definitely, that's something we'll I want to, to, that. I yeah. Want to yeah. get into. Yeah. But that's like, so that's like the baby step. So you can do one room, mm. um, or you can do, you do the whole house. And so then feng shui, like from a 101 <laughs> standpoint is like, it's about balancing the elements, fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. So you use the elements in the space to like, make it feel good. And I can actually do like an astrology reading for your house. So there's the decorating wow. layer, the like how to scared. decorate. She'd be like, there's ghosts uh, everywhere. I, I mean, <laughs> well, I, like, I don't want to. might take a week. There's so many rooms. Well, yeah. well I don't want to talk <laughs> about the compound. Yeah. I have a question about that. So the couple that was that, um, when we, we bought the house from a couple that was divorcing. Ooh. So, and I was like, as soon as we moved in, I'm like, they divorced over this wall color. They divorced <laughs> over the maintenance of this fucking monster. Yeah. Um, but like, is there a, um, is there like a is there like a cleansing? Do you do like yeah. the saging shit too? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you like, can eradicate yeah. the bad vibes. Well, the bad vibes. So like, 
uh, in a house. We call it a bagua map. And it basically looks like you put a pie over a floor plan. And so you have eight different wedges. And each of those wedges has like different energy in it. Um, similar to where, where if you get an astrology chart reading, you know how they look at that circle. It has all the lines on it. And they're like, your Sagittarius yeah. is in your 12th house. So you should do this. I like do that for your house. And I'm like, okay, there's like clashing energy here. So put wood, what, like wood and fire. And then over here, this is where your personal energy is. Put water and paint it pink. Okay. So I, want, I, want, I don't know Andrea if I should answer your Will you do a stable as well? She has a stable on the <laughs> oh, ground. Or horse barn. Or horse oh, barn. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. That made sounded worse. Um, it's like really getting a elaborate. Everything. Cabin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll do the whole house. Yeah. But if there's ghosts somehow. I'm not, I'm not the person. A third do, car garage? Will you, you take care of that? Do Jordan do wants to know. a horseman. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, wait, so, like, how much of this is, like, mystical and how much of this is, like, based in, like... Function. In, like, fu yeah, in function and, like, how... Depends on the layer. So, okay. I, like, the home energy refresh has nothing to do with... I don't look at the energy of the house in terms of, like, um, like... I find the energy of the house based on when it was built and the direction it's facing. I don't do any of that. We just, you, we talk on the phone and you're like, my office is really driving me nuts. It's not efficient. It's arranged weird, but I'm not good at this. Tell me what to do. Okay. Mm. And so we can start at that. And then like, if you want to get really mystical and you want to get into manifesting and using the energy in your space, like we can get there. But got it. But what I am the, not the type of feng shui consultant. There is a common misconception that like decluttering is feng shui. Mm. Like if you're like Marie Kondo type thing. Yeah. Okay. That's like different. Right. Uh, so it, you can be you can helps. be a mess but have good feng shui. My yeah, my <laughs> desk. Like honestly, throughout the week, if I'm deep in a project, if I'm deep like in creative mode, my house is a mess. Right. But I know that like. I have plants over here that are like good for creative energy. I have like a water feature over here and that's good for my clarity and I have things in place and then like I clean up and I feel better. So it's kind of like, right. I don't, so I don't really do the whole declutter kind of thing. Sure. Got it. These are going to be some broad questions that I have. Yeah, I love it. Okay. A single person is out there listening right now. What's the best thing they can do for their home that can you know, make their simple life. Step. Yeah. yeah. What's one simple thing you would tell to every single person out there living in the home? That is broad. Yes. <laughs> She's just like, I love that your show doesn't have the rules for everyone. Yeah. Um, right, okay. Right. So let's talk about, one. How about like, one rule. Well, it always starts like with what is your intention okay. for your space? So, so like, if your intention for your space is to find a significant other, then make space to receive a significant other. What does that look like? In literal sense. That can be anything from... And like, this side of the bed is yours. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I mean, sometimes people get that, like, they get, like, that way. They set up two nightstands and they're, like, prepared it for him. Okay. You know? And okay. They're, like, or they make space in the uh, closet and they're, like... I can't I'm, imagine sleeping in a woman's place. They're, like, I'm just making space for And the closet is open for me. There's a nightstand. Already, right. What they're can ready, I plug in my phone? Well, that charge is yours. <laughs> A little I mean, weird, but, I, but I sometimes get it. Yeah. it gets people. It gets you in that like vibration that. Yeah. of anticipation. Mm. Like, well, and it's I know of, this is going to happen for me. I've made space. I'm ready for well, it. Well, it's kind of like right. you were talking about with your apartment. It's like there's nowhere for us for like. I, how could I be with a? How could I have a girlfriend over? Like, there's no. You don't have a couch that we could chill on. Right? Like, how so do we so hang out? If you how do we have, have a fifth couch, date? Right. Then you're manifesting the girlfriend. That right. like. If Jared's intention is to manifest a relationship, like I can see how you feel this apartment has, I can see why you feel you've outgrown it or why, not why you can't bring somebody back. You actually make it sound like way worse than it actually is. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, this isn't that bad. But like, there's no stages, right? It is really like, you would get serious really quickly if you brought her back because it's literally like, there's the bed. Here's our bed. <laughs> we're either naked, Netflix and chilling go. and getting yeah. married and cuddling or like we're having like. So he needs an day. area to be with someone in a non-sexual way. Kind of like like, right. like in Dallas right. when I was in like a 750 square foot apartment. It's like you could bring a guy back and you can have like a drink in your kitchen at your bar and then you can like hang out on the couch, make out on the couch, watch Netflix. But then he never made it to the room. Like there's stages, mm. right? you know, but like when you're it's all in one room, it's like. 
No, that does make sense. You need. There's like, no but evolution. You can do that even in a studio, though. I think you could. You do, can. I think right. you could do that. Like you just again. I think one thing that your apartment maybe didn't have would be like a like inviting, cozy, a nook, chill area. Because you can still fit that in your apartment, right? I mean, like the idea that I didn't around. have a uh, like a like a a table to like a coffee table, a coffee yeah, table. Right. like that doesn't help there to be a hang. And I think right. dividers are really big. So I was talking to Candace about this before. Like, it is funny to think of these New York apartments because it isn't my like usually it's a bigger space. <laughs> right. But I was like, what are they going to ask? How are you? But dividers are really big. Like. Like a divider, even a curtain. That um, feels a little, you know, hospital-y to me. A cur- There's well, really a pretty, like, screens. Too. Interesting. So, like, you think putting up a, something like a, There's a divider ways between to my bed and the different. couch? What if even his, like, what if his couch was just, like, facing, like, the different way than the bed? Do you know what I mean? To make it feel like more of a separate area. Um, I actually think where your couch is is good. Where was it before? Because you mentioned in the video. Well, before when I used to tape my podcast in the apartment, I would have the podcast set up to the right of the bed and then the couch was just on like literally facing the kitchen from kitchen. my bed in. It was facing the kitchen. but You couldn't see the TV. No. You'd okay. have to like lie on it to watch the TV. It, right. it literally was yeah. just a couch in a home. <laughs> like it would be in a garage. Right. You know, uh, like it wasn't really. You could. You can denote spaces like with rugs and carpet. So that's do it's funny, your rug like is like in the middle of the apartment, but it doesn't like it's not like in the living room or in the bedroom. Mm. It's like so that doesn't help break up the space. So you think And then like a, a coffee table would work. I think the couch is good where it's at, but I do think in other scenarios it I get why it seems nice if you're facing different things. But it's but you think separating a room that's not separated is a better way to go? Having like that mental like delineation, yeah. Because also when you're sleeping, you're like looking at work. Laundry's everywhere. There's clothes thrown everywhere. There's no rhyme or reason for anything. And again, that's where it's like, of course you think, well, if I was tidier, it'd be better. But it's more like the intention behind why you should declutter. I want to be having more sex with my husband and having our chores and our dirty laundry does not make me feel sexy. Mm. So start with the five senses. Like, first, do you feel good? Like, what is it that you see? Can you hang up more like sensual artwork? There's all kinds of like cheap line art that's like outlines of bodies that like are more romantic. There's, um, can you put like his cologne on your nightstand and her perfume on his? And like, Mm. that kind of is nice. Like spray that on your bed before you go to sleep, see what happens, you know? Like, um, do you have textures like velvet pillows, different textures on like silk sheets? That's kind of weird maybe, but. I don't know. So there's some nice silk cheese, but just like what gets you feeling romantic and sexy. And it's good to start with the five senses, I think. It's so interesting because it's like someone could be hearing this going, of course. But <laughs> like I because when I hear that, I go, yeah, that right. makes that these are all right. like these logical. make sense. Yeah. Logical. Yeah. Um, is it, you know, but. Is there something like, is like the way it, you know, your bed faces, is yep. that like a thing? Is yep. like, 
is yeah like what what about like the where you're putting things in the apartment so then there's also that like um you want to be it's called the power position you want to be in the power position so you want to have your bed, i'm always in it <laughs> you want to have your bed on a solid wall against ideally the wall. against okay. a wall got that got it yeah. Good job. honestly that's again i'm like expecting just this worst case scenario you're expecting it to be the middle of the room <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with you have a love life. With, with, with a bedpan <laughs> next to it right. yeah you're not directly facing the door so like energy comes in through doorways so at, at every door in your house that's the feng shui of this room we're, we're changing it yeah the, well yeah. hold on let me answer the other Sorry. thing it's all good. <laughs> so, we're out of uh, so it's like if you were to pour if if energy is a bucket of water and you were to pour a bucket of water into your bedroom and your bed is like right in the doorway you can imagine that would feel overwhelming you can't really sleep well so yours is good because you can still see the front door you're on a solid wall um you don't want your wall, bed like floating. Headboards are a good thing. I know people like joke about like, oh, this guy got that. Got you it. have a great headboard. Thank um, you. you don't Ray. want. Does it matter that his mom picked it out like 15 years ago? <laughs> it doesn't. No, you know? it doesn't matter it's who good. bought it. No. Okay. If your ex bought it, maybe weird. Okay. I don't, I don't what if, would that, well, what does that if, contribute to the feng shui? Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Bought it? Yeah, yeah, I don't recommend like keeping your ex's stuff around. So Her. like I had. That I, is, what about the, that's energy. It'll trigger like. Right. Everything we have like triggers an emotion, and mm -hmm. like if you look at oh he bought me this, I remember that date, and meanwhile your husband's over here. You know, like it takes you back to that time. These right. things visually, tr mm. these trigger things you, visually yeah. trigger like. Well, you go? Yeah. well, that's a good question. What about in his drawer? He has all the cards from the exes. Yeah. So then like your <laughs> I was thinking about that. Your nightstand. Okay. So on top of headboards, you don't want a lot of sorry. storage. Uh, I've been thinking about that since I'm sorry. Time. I just imagine Jordana waking up in the, in the middle of the night. <laughs> the ex is. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm I mean, at home. You best wait, believe. Wait, 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 you better wait. believe that like if Mike had is in his nightstand with yeah. it was Call all these cards from his exes in my, my house, that would be, those would be gone. Well, and in the yeah. nightstand, nonetheless. Yeah. I mean, right. Like, Next to the condoms with his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So We're should... really seeing what your intention is here. Like, it's right. really painting a picture. Should he toss those? The condoms? No. <laughs> well, those two, but the... The, the expiration date uh, is you approaching. Don't, okay, look, you don't have to toss it. Again, like, if you like... I believe in having a box of things that bring good memories, but like not next to where you're sleeping. So mm. you don't want like storage above your bed and then your nightstands. That is not the place for the junk drawer. Okay. Because when mm. you're sleeping, all that stuff has energy. It's charged. And like whether you know it or not, you're subconsciously thinking about it. Like it's right. affecting you. So you want your nightstands to be clean and like just have the essentials. Minimal. Do you think and this is why New York City people have like a-, so a, a fucking a, tense. Right, <laughs> right. Because like what you, what you just said makes sense again. Like don't have oh, your junk good. drawer next to the bed. Right. Yeah. But like, I'm thinking in my apartment, where, like, else am where I gonna are we going to fucking put it I mean, in the you oven? put it in the big bag of, uh, of like the costumes that you have, the wigs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You How would I find my costumes? You have a lot of underutilized vertical space. Vertical. Yeah. Oh, like I could put shelves in yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like something funny about your apartment is there's nothing. Candace did say people picked up on this. I don't know if it's just me, but like you have nothing hanging in your apartment. Nothing that like. Is the bathroom Tom except, Brady. Thing. So then this is funny. So the way you describe that is these are the two goats, Board Lord and Tom Brady. Mm. And it gave me a very like curb your enthusiasm moment like i feel like larry david would put people he hated in his bathroom and pretend he was like peeing on them okay, okay. so it's like weird to me i wanted to like people that you love I, right. yeah i well, wanted to the unpack bathroom that is my throne <laughs> if well, it, it is funny, like, right. like that's the only place you've cared to like truly exactly decorate. Mm. i wanted to like i wanted to like unpack what that. Is that saying about your energy i get i got a shitty energy <laughs> yeah i'm like is he proud of himself it's just, it's just it is right. odd that the two things you have taken the time to hang up and you care about are in the bathroom it's i mean this is, it is psychological yeah. this podcast has become a psychological <laughs> study For of you, how yes, whether i'm single, fucked up or not a single man in his late 30s right yeah. this is yeah. like this is gonna be in the you know they're gonna put this like in the history right. books this is gonna be look at the breakdown of a man i mean what do you say about the uh the eight cutting boards in the kitchen <laughs> well, so like He's the holding on to the past. <laughs> well, I like so what I was kind of picturing for you, and I don't know if this fits, if this sounds like a good idea to you, but like just like the bed, we want that in the power position. You want your desk in the power position. You want a solid wall behind your back. 
it's odd to have like in your to me it's odd to have like your front door behind you it like Mm. i feel like subconsciously it distracts people like who's going to come in and also to any of your listeners out there who are like i can't focus while i'm working it's like in our DNA to be worried about what's coming up behind us. Or like, mm. I don't know about DNA, but like it's in our like Your blood. evolution, yeah. right, to be scared of probably an animal. So power position, yeah. right. you want solid wall at your back. And so in your case though, because I know these apartments are smaller, I don't like when desks are facing the wall because it manifests as like, I feel like I'm hitting a wall. I'm not going anywhere in my career opportunities. Mm. You want opportunities to come to you, right? So you want to be facing the door, Facing the opportunities. But in your case... Facing the door. Okay. Yeah. Like, not... Where in your case, like, your back is turned to opportunities. Right. But um, Mm. to make space... That's why my career is halted. No, no, you're doing great. (laughs) You know that. I don't... (laughs) But in your case, I think you could put it at the front. Or I could... I do think you could put your desk facing the wall because then you have all that space behind you Mm. to where... You can put things that matter. Like, I think it's cool you have all the boards and people made that for you. You can, like, use, put shelves and put that as decor. Like, a similar here, you have, like, cool what things. You, put what, the, the late night mugs up and right. it, like, displays, right. like, your accolades. Where you've been. Where I, you, well, what do you say to someone who's like, because in my mind, you and say this to is, someone who hasn't been on the Tonight Show, <laughs> <laughs> who has to no the awards out there who yeah. haven't made it in their lives. No, then, I, but well, what about I do have an answer for that question. I, what would your answer to that be? Put, um, that's where like vision boards come in. It's like, where do you want to go? Like, what is your intention? Where do you want to go? What do you want to achieve? And is there a way up? to put up a vision board that doesn't look like a vision board? Because I wouldn't yeah. want, I'd be embarrassed. Yeah, I feel like vision boards feel, and again, maybe it's just us being kind of cynical, feel a little cheesy. Cheesy, braggy, uh, delusional. Well, is it braggy? Because it's like you have, this is a list of shit you haven't done. Right. I, I, I always, whenever I hear vision board and I see someone's, I don't know, I haven't seen many, but like when right. I hear the idea of them, mm-hmm. I I think I'm like, you think you're going to do that? Right. Like, I, And I'm a hater. I, I, yeah, I would say the same thing to yeah. me doing I think one. that vision boards have... I hate when anything like that's actually helpful gets taken and like m- turned so cheesy and used. So- like the word manifest now is just like right. it's been cheesified. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, oh, this kind of sucks for my business. But you can put up. You some- can do it right, is you- what you're saying. Well, just put up like your next goal. Like if you were still, if you still wanted to get on Netflix, uh huh. Print the Netflix logo and right. like frame it. And be like, every day when I'm working, I'm like, I know that I'm doing this for Netflix. Or something that represents Netflix to me. Like yeah. there could be like an artist's take on yeah. such a subject. Yeah. Or, or, right. like you, or, or you have a frame from someone else's Netflix special that you love. Yeah, like, technically, you could argue that your home is a 3D vision board. Everything in your home mm. should okay. evoke where you want to go, what your intentions are, who you want to be. Um, I have a lot of, not a lot, but I have a handful of women clients who are like, I want to manifest a relationship. And um, they're really successful, like at running a business and all this stuff. And I'll turn your pillows into a man. (laughs) (laughs) uh, Draw a face on your pillow. You, I'll go into their apartment and they'll have all this very like, I'm a badass woman, like females, like it's really cool art. And stuff, but it's, and it's all these independent women, but they're all alone, right? And, and they they're like be. they're flipping right. things off, and like, or they have like the middle finger, middle middle finger candles, you know? Those oh, things. and it's like Just like my your bust butt hand. Butt hand. Candle. Yeah. yeah, and like I'm like, do you really want to attract a relationship? Because right. you seem pretty. So you're giving cool off that you're off so energy. independent, right? Interesting. So they, your whole home is a vision board. So they're like in 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 with the, the their idea of pumping themselves up. They've pumped themselves up for a future that they're actually not looking for. Exactly. This, I mean, this could be very. This, well, this conversation can go very that. right wing very quickly. <laughs> but I, 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 I understand what you're saying. No, I think there's a. I think there's something to that. But I think there's a reason people do that, right? Is and I think it's because it can feel a little bit like. I think it can feel a little bit depressing to be like, I'm preparing this apartment for like a relationship that I don't have, right. and then when I see the second. When I see the second, and what do you say to people who probably say that? When I see the second um, nightstand and no one's there, like it, it, it reminds me that I don't have someone and I feel bad. So it's easier for me to like live a life where I'm almost like fake it, faking that I am looking for this until I believe it. 
yeah. than doing that. I think that that is a trade-off right. for a lot of people because it's like the idea of manifesting or anything. It's like the more, I don't know if I want to think about this life that I don't have because it makes me sad that I don't have it. Right. Then I Every would time say, you come home is the failure. Right. Yeah. Which is, it isn't, but that's how it could right. feel. So yeah. Then I would say don't do it. I also am of the belief that like, just because feng shui rule says to do something, if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Like, I don't like the color red. To add in, in feng shui, there's certain directions. They say add in fire, that is red. Well, I would be annoyed every time I looked at that red chair. So you don't do it. You do the things that make you feel good. If you don't want to make space and be like, oh, now it just looks empty and I'm alone. Then again, what's all the advice like you give people when you're wanting to attract a partner, but not think about how you're alone. Think about like, make your life exciting. How do you feel your best so that you're just giving off this energy of, I feel good, I don't care, whatever happens, happens, like that's exciting. And how can you create a space that shows you got a lot going on? Also, like, I feel good about myself. Like something's going to come, I feel good. And in the meantime, like, right. And also I think- But maybe that's not also the other spe end of the spectrum though. Right. With the like middle fingers up and whatever. Yeah, yeah. something in between those two. Right. Well, right. because that person- This is an acknowledgement person... that that could be something ruining your own energy without you yeah. knowing right. it. Right, you've almost gone too far in the overcorrection phase. Or right. maybe you needed that. You went through a breakup and you were in the like, I need to feel independent and good about myself again. I lost myself in that relationship. And so you put up all that stuff. But then, yeah, mm. it's like, okay. But if you're ready to call it in, maybe just- only have like one thing in the living room and in the bedroom. Only one yes queen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only right. one middle finger. Right. Only one Ruth G Bader Ginsburg poster. Well, it's true. Like uh, uh, something yeah. to remind you that you're strong and you and you are independent, but not some not so so fully everywhere that it feels like you're not letting anyone any space in for yeah. something different. Right. It's well, I I guess on. Um, you know, we're we're all millennials, right? You know, I think for a lot of millennials, the idea of owning a home is different now. So you have a lot of people that are renting. I'm renting that apartment. Like the idea of me putting up shelves in an apartment that I rent. Yeah, you say that. I, I'm like, no way. I'll do it at my home. But like, you know, I think this is a very millennial thing. Right. I do. I don't think I'm alone. Did you do that when you owned the? When, Not really. I was always it? like, well, once I do this, I'll do that. I think a lot of millennials live in this world of like, we're, we're, we're straddling. You know, it's like why we like tapas. We don't want to like commit right. to anything. So there's a lot of people out there, I'm sure, have a similar mindset. Well, that's mindset. why they do like fast fashion and fast decor. Okay. So like, I don't want to buy it. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to buy the $20,000 restoration hardware couch because I don't know if I'm going to be here that Who long. Knows right. 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 Well, yeah. but, you know, as far as feng shui is concerned, like when mm -hmm. you say like you have so much vertical space, I'm like... Mm. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm like uh, that f will make it feel like this is it. This is over for me. This space. Well, I mean, if, well are you leaving? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I might have to leave soon. I, okay. I, well, then it. Well, then that's correct. But I think right. it's more like then maybe your next. I, I would imagine you're going to go into your next space, being like, okay, the next place I go into is going to feel more like a home. I would like that to be the case. Right. Um, yeah, I would hope that. I mean, that's. It's, it's, the walls are coming in on me. <laughs> if you, like, let's say you had another six months and, mm -hmm. and you, I mean. To like, live? No, another oh. six months in this apartment. <laughs> okay. in this apartment. Oh. Uh, you, like, six months is a really long time to feel like I feel comfortable and like I'm not going anywhere. Right. And like no momentum, right? And so it's like you can look at the things that are important to you. I don't know. So you don't have to like decorate it to the nines, but like your hats are your hats important. Like, could you just like I hug get them a, every night? Could you get a vertical thing to kind of show like a, a hat showcase? <laughs> yeah. Like, or like, and it gives it a little personality. Like it's just you respecting the things that you paid money for. You know, right. it's like, this was important to me. I like it. And I'm going to, it's, I don't know, but uh, well, I guess I was getting more, sorry, I was getting more to like, if you already feel stuck and your space is just kind of like piles, mm -hmm. it just sort of, your, your external is a direct reflection of your internal. And so it's just saying like, yeah, I'm stuck. But if you wanted to feel unstuck, yeah, hang the hats and like get, like move the energy around a little bit, like mm -hmm. get these things out of piles, you'll feel a little bit more put together and potentially motivated to do something else, you know? I, I'm making a lot of assumptions here, like 
that you would be here next another six months and you feel that stuck. But you know what I mean? If anybody no, I, felt stuck and they're surrounded by piles, it's like, what kind of like... Right. Well, it's How also you- like, what are you looking for in the period of time that you will live there yeah. for? And I think maybe it almost forces you to make that decision of like, oh, I want to invest in a space that makes me feel like this because I want to feel like this soon mm-hmm. versus like, I'll wait to feel like this in the next place. Yeah. Right. And that, I, I think that's a problem that I share with probably a lot of people. I'll, I'll feel that way at the, the next place. I'll right. feel that way when I can feel that way. I'll, it, it's a lot. The, right. It's a lot like, you know. I have. I'll wear those pants once I lose the ten pounds. It's. It, it is part of that mindset. Yeah, and I think to sort of go back to what you were saying before about not committing to things or not like feel like the feeling of. I think a lot of people live in that phase of if the, you know if they're single, it's like I'm not gonna go to that. I'm not gonna go visit that country because I'm waiting for someone to go with, or I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna make this. I'm not gonna live in a in a home that I like because I'll move into a place once I'm splitting the rent with someone. Right. Um, and it can be hard to like live the life that you want without the thing that you thought was going to be there at this point in it. But I guess that goes back to something that you were talking about before, like creating a, like, you know, when you make the space that has room for the partner, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of are living in that mindset. It, it, right. you're, you you're, are manifesting it. Right. Yeah. And, and kind of to go back to my place where I'm like, oh, well, the next place I'll have that thing. And it's like, well, then aren't I living in the place that's encouraging me to be not in that next thing? Like, right. my place is for no commitment. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You're, that's what you're like. Yeah. That's, that's what you're attracting. And the external is showing that. Like, if you don't even want to hang a shelf. Right. Because that's too much commitment. Like, how could I, right. How could I ever be commit. with a woman? Yeah. It's like, you it's can't not, commit to this apartment. Right. You can't commit to a woman. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I, I like think about like working out or health, right? So, like, um, if your intention was to get healthy mm-hmm. and to like, eat better, cook more. And when I date, I want to like have somebody over and one of the dates can be like, we're cooking in the kitchen together. So as you look for a new place, if that is a part of your new ideal identity, new ideal day, you will want to find an apartment or a house that has a kitchen where you, you know, you'll want to look for a good kitchen. If, um, I don't know anything about your Harlem apartment, but you've joked about how it's like a huge patio, yes. right? It's like, if your intention is to throw parties and host a network, then that's great. But if it doesn't have a kitchen, you're not going to like grow as in that health department of your life because the kitchen doesn't afford you the space to like grow that right. part of you. Or make you excited to. Yeah, it doesn't make you that. excited. Yeah. yeah. Or like working out. Like if you want, if somebody's like, I really want to get healthier and I want to work out more from home, create a space that's mm-hmm. exciting to go to, you know, to work out in. I right. think this is all very interesting. I, I love that we're what? talking about this because I did, when you me- message, I was like, this could be a fun idea for the podcast. But I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking of like men listening to this. Like, I, I, I don't know why this feels gendered to me, but like a guy hearing this going, oh, shit, I, I want to relate like the idea of like. I, I want a relationship, true, but my place isn't set up, you know, yeah. like, do you want a relationship? Like your place isn't even set up. You, well, you haven't or, committed, you know, just that whole thing of committing to the place. Right. Yeah. Or do you even want to advance in your career? Like, to your point, I do think a lot of younger men, they start with, like, I need to be somebody by 30 and have my shit together before I have a relationship. Okay, well, is your mattress on the floor and, like, your hats aren't hung up and your crap's everywhere? That's not really... Sometimes you have to, like, what would a CEO do? How would they show up? Like... Right. What would their apartment look like? Yeah. Right. You're going to have to I mean, get I, in that headspace. I used to make fun of women for having the picture. <laughs> Decor- something decorated. Decorated. In their, when when the roommates would have the pictures of them up on like the windowsill. Yeah. I thought that was the dumbest thing I've it's ever so seen. Sweet. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was dumb. And now it makes more sense to me. I thought it was dumb too. But then I'm saying like when I, I think... It's interesting that I wanted a relationship so badly, but I lived with my roommate and I had this room that was facing like an alleyway with no <laughs> natural light. Um, and the apartment was like always a mess. And our couch was like had, was like missing a bottom at some point. And I think that and it's funny, like as soon as I moved out of that place and into my own apartment and I felt like excited about the apartment, I felt really good about um 
like proud proud of it like like excited to show it to someone yeah I like the relationship really followed like very quickly after that and you probably felt better about yourself right Mm. like if I lived in an apartment with five other roommates and I was just only ever in my room I'd be like this isn't what like millionaires are doing I feel like you know I don't know it's an extreme example but it's like your self-esteem Right. Is tied to it a little bit as well. And I think it's this big question of almost like efficiency versus like cre- like creation in some ways. Because it is like, ineff- it's kind of like, oh, I don't really need my own apartment. I don't really need like um, the shelves. The, the I shelves. don't need these shelves. Like I've been getting. The- I don't need I've- to paint my right. room. But it's also yeah. kind of like. We don't need to do any of this shit. Like, you don't need to do half right. the shows you probably... You don't need done. to dress right. for success. You don't need to... Right. Why like, do you do it? Because you know it'll lead to... Like, there's a feeling that it'll lead to something bigger. Something better, yeah. It's yeah. it's interesting. I mean, is there... I I I want more feng shui. What, 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 well, how can we feng shui yeah. this, this studio? Yeah. Well, we so, want more YouTube followers. That's our intention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, your studio, I mean, okay, so you're like in the power position. So that's good. You have the logo. I mean, I don't think this place is like, I wasn't prepared to look at it. It's well, we're, we're, getting, we're getting like more of like a couchy feel. We're going to go okay. couch. Yeah. So it, that's intentional probably because you want more casual conversations. <laughs> yeah, we want it to feel less formal, like, mm. less news yeah. desky. Yeah. So that that works, and then it's like just look at what's behind. Like, you know, are you looking to be like, hey, we're a really established brand. We got a lot going for us. We've, you know, then you put little hints of like, people should be proud of themselves. You know, like it's not braggy and it's not bad to be like, I've here's my yeah. YouTube. You had an Oscar, you would display it. Yeah, right. here's my YouTube yeah. silver play button. Here's my like picture with so-and-so you know that's why like restaurants they have the people up with all the celebrities that have right. come They're no like, one's like oh you're so braggy right <laughs> yeah so well, i would say like you're hang you're, up all our war oh, oh we haven't yeah. won very many <laughs> no but, but then uh. to your point if you want more casual conversation then yes because it would have it would have started with like what's the intention for the space because technically right now like i think you got a good Good thing. Going I love on. a round table. I feel like it's welcoming round, like curves are welcoming. It's good for gathering, less separating. Um, but if you're like, no, we want more casual, then. Yeah. All right. Well, what are you going to do with your time in New York? You're here for the night. <laughs> What's the plan? I don't, I really don't know. Yeah, I haven't thought to. I was very like excited about this. Speaking of intentions, you know, like to grow the business, tell more people about Feng Shui. I want people to feel good in their space so that they're excited about their life. Do you do virtual appointments? Oh, yeah. So virtual. I would say most things are virtual these days. So yeah. you're, oh, cool. people can get on Zoom with you, show you their space? Yeah, so the baby step version, if you didn't want to do your whole house, is the home energy refresh. And it would be us talking for an hour about whatever space was a problem for you, whether it's your office, you know, like a lot of people think of Zoom backgrounds, like how Mm. many people have the blur background effect on their Zoom background, they're trying to get a promotion, but they're like, embarrassed about what's going on. And they're like, right, you know, you dress for success. And then meanwhile, like behind you is just like all your crap or like, yeah, it's you want to be proud of your background. Yeah, yeah your Zoom background. That's oh, right. Or like yeah. when women go out, like they feel better when they have makeup on. They're like, yeah, you talk to me. And when we don't have makeup on, we're like, Just, I hope nobody sees me. You know, like. Right, you want to feel hot. Yeah. <laughs> so you, I would, um, it's an hour. We talk about whatever space you want to talk about. It starts with what are your intentions? Then we rearrange. We give your space attention with that intention. And I help. If you want flow help, if you want decor help, if you want, you know, we can do the whole thing. And then um, they go out and they take aligned action, you know? I love it. I love it. Where do they find all of the, the uh, this is Jeanette yeah, Sizikowski. We're going to have to have a talk about my house. I, yeah. Well, so that's you're everything. You're going to need so a three-hour meeting. I will say, so that's <laughs> this the- This compound that Jordana lives yes, in. Can you function Do you have castles? House? Yeah, that's, the, I do. I do. You're that's the That's the baby step. But what I will say is then there's this like bigger layer of like, before you go and repaint and spend all this money on all this furniture, Feng Shui is kind of like insurance for your decor, like you know you're buying something that's gonna feel good in the space, you know you're investing in the right paint color, the right decor to like support your health, wealth, and happiness. Right. Whereas like you could, if you could just be like, I'm gonna, like it sounds like these red walls, I'm gonna throw up some red paint, see how it goes, maybe I'll feel good, or maybe, you know, red's like anger and uh, feistiness, like maybe that was the dissolve, you know. Maybe that was the solution of the previous marriage. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, elemental oh, yeah. clarity. 
Yeah. Is it elementalclarity.com or is sure. there a website? And then, and... Well, YouTube and Instagram are both at Elemental Clarity. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, this is, I think this is so interesting. Like what's the best store for feng shui items? Is um, there a store that you think is- Or is it more about is... the placement than No. The so items? I like to say, let's repurpose and reposition what you already have. Mm. Because I think a lot of Love people that. are like, oh, I have to spend money to have good feng shui. Yeah. I'm not into like fast fashion. I'm not into fast decor. Like don't buy like a cheap. Yeah. But let's repurpose, reposition what you already have because that stuff should already mean something to you. And like <laughs> then get the energy flowing. What's yeah. the most feng shui plant? Uh, bamboo is really good. Anything light and airy. We don't want you guys do have a like this thing. Don't this like thing. It. You don't like it. Okay. <laughs> Gotta get rid of that weed. All right, it's but gone. Anything, yeah. anything. Just throw like, it against the wall. Anything fresh and airy. So no cactus. Like I don't like cactus, agave, like anything. That's very harsh and pokey and dry and like not abundant. The like, like lushness is very good. Mm. Okay. I and like, like that. the people, we're going way back and trying to wrap it up. But like if for women in their space, like peonies, flowers in your space. Yes. Oh. Penises and peonies are <laughs> <Yes>. great. <laughs> Peonies, <laughs> flowers are great for like that, adding in that like, it smells nice. Yeah. Yeah. I feel a little romantic, candles. I feel more feminine. Oh yeah, fantastic. Yeah, That's the five senses, right? So full circle, like what are you seeing? What are you smelling? I love like, that. What are you hearing? I'm gonna go home and try to feng shui my <laughs> office. I, I, I Listen, this is all great. Um, we, Jeanette, thank you so much for coming on. This Thanks. is like this is so awesome. wonderful. I, I think people are going to like we like to change it up here. Yeah. And I think this is something to <laughs> no, like change your perspective. I think I, it's a big underrated part of like find like, um, you know, getting what you want is creating a space that is open to that. So a lot of people sense. don't. Yeah, it's a don't think about it. Yeah, they just yeah. don't think about it. They're like, this is what's good on Pinterest. Like everyone's putting up beige so i should get beige as in neutrals and actually like your personal energy needs something different usually what something should people do with kids kids well i kind of like say look when they're really young don't like add something to your list just like it's gonna be chaos for a little bit if you don't like that chaos then like let's look at um like yeah where in the home we can delineate again separate the spaces like where is kids where is relaxation mm -hmm. where is something right. else if all the kids stuff is in the bedroom and it's just a mess like that's probably not helping your romantic life in the bedroom you yeah know? Right. so creating like quarantine the kids <laughs> don't mix Lock them kids with peonies no kid like <laughs> but it like the having like um sections is also like a really basic place to start mm. right but well, i feel like about I, your bed like it should be just just for um sex and sleep right yeah yeah and eating <laughs> No? Oh, okay. And working like <laughs> Jared's like, I'm like, I see why I'm eating Chinese no, food, right? I, I found I've slept Naked. a lot better after getting like I don't have a TV in my bedroom now. And no that's, TV? That's a well, big feng shui no, oh. no. It broke, but so I was forced to not have it there. And then now I feel like it's like the room is I have better sleep in the room. A big oh. feng shui no no is no TV in the bedroom. Yeah. But no I, TV in the bedroom. Yeah. Because you don't want you don't want a mirror facing your bedroom that like or you don't, a want a mirror mirror ceiling. you don't want a mirror facing your bed, <laughs> which you don't have, which is good. But a mirror facing your bed will mess with your sleep. You won't sleep well. It moves around all this energy. And same thing with a screen. Screens are reflective. And so it acts as a mirror, but also um, for practical psychological reasons, like it's just distracting. You don't talk to your partner as much. You know, you have all those like stories. But then also it's just the, all the electricity and stuff in the room. Like this is a lot one of, of those things that I know would be like good for me, but like you're never gonna. I've I never... would do it, but I I, I just would not. At first, I would like kick and scream, right. and then I would realize how good it is for me. Well, that's why I, I yeah. never would have done it, but like it just did. It happened to me. Right. I've never had a client me. take a TV yes. out. They're all like, no, and I'm like, okay. I had to tell you as a response. It's a right. like a duty of mine to tell you. But you can do whatever you want. It's not helpful. But not one of them have taken it out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you keep it. Well, Jeanette, this was a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank for coming you. in. This yeah. is so, so nice. Uh, we hope you have a nice trip to New York. And uh, we hope a lot of people go search you out. Um, Elemental Clarity. Yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah. So we want everyone to get involved and Check feng shui their awesome. life. Yes. Feng shui your life. We'll see if Jared implements any of these changes. That's right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.
The You Up Podcast is produced by Jorge Morales Pico, Sean Kilby, and Candice Maniga. Editing by Jorge Morales Pico and Shannon Sassone. Social media by Candice Maniga. Guest booking by Ali Friedlander. Be sure to follow at you.up.podcast on Instagram and send us your emails to uup at betches.com. Betches.